Hey guys, so recently in the last month or so, I was reading the Zatch Bell manga. I went into the series not expecting a whole lot, but ended up getting quite a lot in the 323 chapters of this manga. This manga is kinda old at this point, written and illustrated by Makoto Raiku. In manga form, it ran from 2001 to 2007, and in anime form from 2003 to 2006. A quick plot primer. In the world of Zatch Bell, there is a human world and a demon world. The demon world determines their king every thousand years via a combat tournament, the winner becoming the new king. The demons have to partner up with a human, who will receive a spell book, with various powerful spells they have to recite inside. The series mainly follows Kiyomaro, a smart middle school student, and Gash Bell, a happy-go-lucky demon who's lost his memories of the demon world. Together they are involved in the battle to become king, with Gash wanting to become a kind and merciful king to all. Disclaimer. I only read the manga, so I can't really comment as to the quality of the anime. But nonetheless, I'm surprised that more people don't bring up this series, considering its quality relative to other series in the same genre. I can't really say whether the anime bogged down its memory or not, because I haven't seen it myself. But considering that almost nobody even talks about its anime at this point, I'm guessing it just wasn't a stellar hit. That's a real shame though, because this series can really kick it with the bigger Battle Shonen titles for a few distinct reasons. I'll discuss three major reasons why this series is worth taking a look at. The first is the most basic, but it's always important when reading a manga, regardless of the kind of series. The first thing to take note of is the consistent art in Zatch Bell. Now I want to put it out there that the art is definitely not like Yusuke Murata levels or anything, but something that this series has going for it is its consistency. First of all, to the mangaka's credit, you are commonly treated to beautiful, hype, and stunning panels from Makoto Raiku in just about every arc. But even when he isn't drawing crazy panels like this, the art remains on a good enough level to be able to discern what's going on. Unlike a good amount of Battle Shonen manga of a similar length, or even just manga of a similar length, there isn't really a noticeable dip in the quality of the art, despite the obvious struggles that Makoto Raiku probably went through as most other manga could do. He soldiered on and kept his art consistent throughout virtually the entire run of the series. In some long-running manga that I've read, the series gets to a point where you see where the manga has started getting tired or fatigued. In Zatch Bell, I don't think there's any standout parts of the series where you see that fatigue kick in. He undoubtedly did go through some shit, it just never reflected itself in the artwork, which I think is incredible. And from start to finish, we're treated to a good amount of really good looking panels and spreads in just about every arc. The next important aspect that makes this series stand out is its unique mixing of genres and how the power system in the series presents itself. Zatch Bell's main draw is the various demons who show up to fight in the tournament to become king. As we know, these demons are not alone. They need to partner up with a human who will dictate the kinds of spells they use and the amount of power they have. This is reminiscent of some monster shows that target younger audiences like uh, most notably Pokemon and Digimon. You have a unique and or powerful monster and a human trainer or tamer that either tells it what to do or gives it encouragement. And like Pokemon and Digimon, humans and demons in Zatch Bell have their own sphere. In Digimon, Digimon have the digital world, and in Pokemon, the Pokemon hang out together in the wild before crossing paths with humans eventually. What's cool about Zatch Bell is that when the battle to determine the king happens every thousand or so years, the humans are of the utmost importance. And furthermore, the relationship between the demons and humans is not only symbolic or psychological, but it has its own cruciality in the battle to become king. In the world of Zatch Bell, humans actually have reserves of energy, called heart power, that they supply to the demon while fighting. So the humans don't only instruct the demons with the spellbook, but they are the demon's source of energy. So the humans have to train themselves in channeling the energy, in protecting themselves, and protecting the demon's spellbook. So the humans don't just stand there while the demons do all the heavy lifting, they get involved in the combat, and are even specifically targeted by the demons as a means of winning the fight. So every fight in Zatch Bell effectively becomes a two-on-two, -two, and the power of the demon is directly connected to the power of the human. They are essentially joined at the hip, so if you're trying to talk power scales, either relative to other series or within the series itself, you don't just talk about Gash, you talk about Gash and Kiyomaro. You talk about Brago and Sherry, because they form a single unit, 
with an equal role in winning the fight. Something I noticed while seeing the few monster shows I've seen is that there tends to be a kind of disparity between how I view the monsters and how I view the humans. In Digimon and Pokemon, I tend to be a lot more invested in the monsters than the human characters, and part of the reason for that is the unequal role that those partnerships share. In those series, the monsters wield the majority of the power. The role of the Tramer slash Tamer is still important, but the humans are seldom physically contributing to the fight, save for a few unique scenes in either series. Zatch Bell has the demons and humans share an almost equal responsibility in winning the fight, which makes me a lot more invested in what happens to the human characters, because they are nearly as crucial as the demons are. Finally, Zatch Bell's main themes can make it a very uplifting read. Despite the constant fighting and the inclusion of demons in the series, now, something that helps a battle shonen stand out is the themes it carries along the way, the common thread that unites the whole series from start to finish. For example, Dragon Ball focuses on self-improvement, My Hero Academia on having the guts and determination to make a difference despite your shortcomings, Gintama on unity despite our various differences, etc, etc. While Zatch Bell shares some common themes like the importance of friendship and generally not being an asshole, the main theme is another thing that stands out in Zatch Bell that I personally loved, and one that I think anyone can get behind. That is, that life is worth it. Now, I can't mention specific examples of this showing itself without spoiling, but there tends to be a lot of downtrodden characters in this series, many who don't have any sense of self-worth, or who don't care if they die, or some who might be even kind of vengeful. And through various means, either through longer character arcs, flashbacks, or just simply a few scenes, we are given the message that despite what you may have gone through, what people may have said to you, or how you feel about yourself, your life is worth it. There's no such thing as a worthless life, no such thing as a being worth more or less than others. Through the various relationships between the humans and the demons, we are given the consistent message that you should always hold yourself in high regard. Value your life and your existence, no matter who you are, or what you are, or what you look like. That's a theme that can resonate with basically anyone, and another thing that makes this manga a spectacular read. So those are the three main reasons why Zatch Bell is definitely worth your time. Short video today, but since I've spent the majority of the quarantine period reading this series, I felt like I had to talk about it. This series is hella underrated, and I hope whoever watches this video and decides to read this series can enjoy it as much as I did. Thanks for watching everyone, and take care.